Ladies and gentlemen, the guest for episode one of Open Late Season 2 would be... Lil Perp, Lil Perp, Ashkara. You know what's going on. Smoke yeah. Perp. Episode one, baby. Let's do it. Season woo, two. Woo, woo. Yes, we're back for a second season, and let's hit the ground running and meet my friends who stopped by tonight. First up, he's the host of Laugh Tracks on True TV, but uh -huh. forever he'll be known as my Juan Epstein brother. Make some noise for Cypher Sound! Hi. What's up? Thank you. Thank you. Next, you can catch her right now on her Smart, Funny, and Black tour, her Small Doses podcast, and, of course, on Insecure when it returns for its third season this Sunday. Amanda Seals is here. Yeah. Oh, all right. Oh. Hey, guys. We're like yeah. old buds. Yeah, I've known you for all a, of us. Yeah, yeah, like a long time. Yeah. Like we, raucous record. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's get into the news. Um, it all started with these inflatable gold heads popping up all over the country. Yeah. And now, Travis Scott has teleported all of us to Astroworld. Um, I've been feeling this way for a long time, but this new album puts it over the top for me. I think Travis Scott may be the best overall musician uh -huh. in hip hop wow. today. Well, what do you mean musician? Yeah. Cause it's not about the bars with him. It's about the, just the music I, overall. Yeah, it's, it's, it's music, but it's also vibe. It's also like how the beats change. So it's like production, almost like a rain. He's almost like a Quincy Jones. Like he does everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And DJ Astro was my first DJ name. Oh so my, I, have, I forgot about so that. So I have a connection to this album. <laughs> I really love the line, it's lit at the night show. All right, all right, all right. Travis is in the process of trying to unseat Drake, whose Scorpion is undoubtedly a hit, but there were mixed reactions to the double album. And a lot of people agree that Drake still has not put out a classic album. So I ask you guys, does Drake have a classic album? Uh, nothing was the same is like to me an actual like solid voir of work. Like I can still listen to nothing was the same beginning to end. But you didn't say classic. It's you're right. It's not. And this yeah. album is no. come on, no. folks. Far from the yeah, audience. Far from. from. Like literally yeah. like hello, hello. Like it's not, it's not even dynamic. It's just the same monotone. Uh, he's like doing, <laughs> it's like Drake doing great. No! Oh, no! Wow. Everyone, no! Shut up! I'll be damned. I've, I've had yeah, problems with Drake for a long Drake, time, and I like this project. Yeah, Drake album, double. See, here's the problem with double it's albums nowadays, album. right? Okay. The, it's Amigos cover. Album. Sheesh. Double albums don't work in the streaming world. It's not an album. It's just a bunch of songs. Okay. You know so, what I'm saying? Saif, you are a DJ. Yeah. You love Drake. Yeah. So you had the opportunity to sign him and. Didn't. Well, I, I no, I've made a mistake in my life. <laughs> many, yeah. many mistakes. I made that a was big one mistake of in my life. He came up yeah. to you at a restaurant, right? Yeah. He gave me a CD, and I was like, I'm not into this right now. <laughs> but it's not about me right now, guys. Does Drake have a classic under his belt? Because a lot of people argue Take Care is a classic. Uh, I like Take. I like all his albums a lot. But they don't feel like a, like classics. What There's no like classic? I don't because here's the thing. They, once they come out and they play in the Drake world and the existence, and you're DJing, I forget which s album a song was on. Well, I I truthfully think as much as I like this Drake album, and I do think it's a very the first disc I think is his best body of work because it's a he double trust. Are you yeah, I like the first disc a lot. I really do. His best do. body of work. I think the first disc is the best Drake album. Yes, I do. Ever? No. Yes. Scorpion. Disc one Scorpion. <laughs> okay, not making sure. Disc yeah. one Scorpion, to me, no. greater than every other Drake album. Yeah. No, no, you're talking <laughs> you're reckless. Right. Really? How, how crazy? I like, more life, I like more life better than Scorpion. Okay. The audience, all, you guys all gro groaned when I said that I love Scorpion. No one here fucks with Scorpion? 
<laughs> really? Keep that same day. energy when they play nice for one in the club. All right, so we talked about Drake, we talked about Travis, but those are only two of the many artists who dropped this summer. We've got new music from Kanye, J. Cole, Pusha T. Nas, Chance, Mac Miller, YG Future, Meek Mill, and oh yeah, uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce. Is 2018 the best hip-hop summer of all time, Amanda Seals? It's like you're acting like 96, like, never happened. Ow. Um, I, th I think, like, name-wise, the, the level of artists that put out projects. Yeah. Like, that and, actually... And that are able to put out projects. Still put out projects. You know what I'm saying? Like, hip-hop is back on top, and all of our greatest artists are dropping albums. Okay, but well, what do you think is the greatest summer? 98. Oh, uh, why 98? 98 there we go. Okay. is the summer of hip-hop. Talk. Locks. Cameron. DMX. Pun. DMX. Lauren Hill. The was, next summer, though. What was 99? Next summer was Cash Money. Yeah. Uh, Juvenile. Yeah. It was Mob Deep Murder Music. It was Supreme Clientele. Yeah. It was Black on Both Sides. Uh, I mean, the Black Star is 98, too. So. Correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But that's uh, Fall 98. It dropped the same day as Tribe Called yeah, Quest. You was waiting for it. You was waiting you for it. You waiting all yeah, summer. Yeah. summer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't who what is this thing with hip hop and seasons? No, it's because Wait, wait, why season? Jay Z Jay Z love talking about running the summer. Dear summer, I, I want to miss me. People want to run the New York summer. Like New York summer is like exactly. dead. Right. That's really what it is. It's New York. New York summer is dead. Why is New York summer dead? There's no we one in New York. To LA. You used to hang out in a sneaker shop. Now it's like nine hundred dollars for a pair of but sneakers. Like also, I can't I gotta work so I can get one. Old, though. I know we're old. We change. Like I feel like Wash. we experience summer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So I'll tell you someone who is definitely washed this summer. That would be Roseanne. Yes, yes. Roseanne lost her show over some racist tweets, and then she seemed to lose her mind. Well, I think she already lost her mind. But uh, Roseanne now received support from a very surprising place, Monique. The Oscar winner Monique called Roseanne quote her sister in comedy. She said she made a mistake but she's not a racist. Who should I ask about this first? <laughs> Amanda. No, 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 I think she asked me first. Why well, not? That's about to get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, can you make a racist mistake, but not be a racist? As a, as a black woman, as a comedian, I think it is incredibly problematic for her to be using her platform in such a uh, reckless way. And it makes me say like, well, we can't really listen to nothing you say. You Five minutes ago, you was having us defend, you were trying to say we should boycott Netflix. And now you're telling us that she's, she's okay? I, it's it's nonsensical. You're Kanyeing right now. Oh. You're saying things that are nonsensical. And as a comic, it's not okay to ever make making those type of statements. Okay, I know there's been a lot of talk these days about like, oh, like you know, Me Too is made like it's no fun no more. And then like, oh, comedy like it's making it this so hard to that. be com it's this making it so hard to be a comic because of PC shit. And it's like, if it was hard for you not to be racist then that ain't got nothing to do with telling jokes. You know what I'm saying? Fife, I know that you are both very um, uh, kind and aware when it comes to issues like this, but I also know you're very protective of comedy. Yes. How do you see the what Monique said about Roseanne? Yeah, I, I don't get as deep as Amanda here, because I feel comedians that get on stage, it is a brotherhood and sisterhood, it is family. Mm -hmm. But, like real family, we got crackhead uncles, we got drunk nephews, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we got alcoholic sisters, like, you gotta like look at your family, like, I don't 100% support what she says, but yes, yeah, she is our sister, you know what I'm saying? Do you think, though, people might feel differently if Roseanne's joke had come on stage I was about and to wasn't say that. a dumb tweet? There was no joke form in what she said. No, there's no setup. There's no there's setup, no, punch. no punchline, it was just nastiness, you know what I'm saying? That's and that's, but I think that's important to note, because it's like, I'll, I'll defend you in comedy. Yeah. But I can't defend you just talking out your ass. Yeah, that wasn't a joke. So. Well said. Well, I'll defend you both anytime. Literally, on the street, if I have to. <laughs> Give it up for Amanda Seals and Type of Sound. In just a second, young Smoke Perp, Lil Perp, is in the house. But first, oh yeah, he's gonna be here. But first, we have to do something new this season. We have found open late correspondence. And in episode one, I sent out our guy, Mouse Jones, to chat with the one and only Spike Lee about his new film, Black Klansman. And Mouse, well, spent most of the time shamelessly promoting himself. <laughs> Check this out.
Doesn't that hatred you've been hearing the clan say, doesn't that piss you off? Of course it does. Then why are you acting like you ain't got skin in the game, brother? Rookie, that's my fucking business. It's our business. When I got the call from Jordan Peele to be part of this, I automatically thought of John David. I, I didn't have no audition. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to read, didn't have to put anything on tape. I said, I want you to do this. Right. You know, I probably could have got him, though. Hmm? If you would have did auditions, and it would have been me and him, I probably would have got him. I'm telling you, I'm good, but I got, I got, put, put the gun down, Jake. You, you heard that? You took a chance on Martin, that's all I'm saying. Took a chance on Martin, he became huge. Take a chance on Mouse. Uh -huh. Mouse Jones, that's me. That's me. What, what is your, uh, are you a comedian? No, I'm, I, so I used to do comedy, but now I'm just, I, I, I just talk shit. I just talk shit for a living, and it's worked do, out do, pretty do, well. Do you work in that craft, or? or talking or, shit? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm pretty, yeah, I'm, I'm great at that. You ever taking lessons? In talking shit? Mm -hmm. No, acting, acting lessons. Oh, uh, I'm friends with Mac Wild, so like, I be like trying to steal his movements and sometimes, and then I watch a lot of Denzel movies. If they came to you for a, uh, a Nick documentary, would you take it? And that I would definitely would like to do a film about the 69. You know, I could do, I could do a mean, I could do a mean Bernard walk. If you are so bent on making John David the action hero, that I could be Bernard King, I'm just saying. In my jumper, but, but that's, that wouldn't be a documentary then. It'd be a docu-film, a docu-something. Would you ever think about doing a School Days uh, Netflix series or remake? What we're, we're doing, we're doing it as a Broadway musical. Ah, uh, you know, hey, I'm just saying. You can sing and dance too? What black kid you know that can't? <laughs> exactly. What? Every, that's like saying we go all dance and play basketball. It ain't true. I could milli rock on the side of the stage, you feel me? How you know we're gonna have that dance? In a, a... Come on, I'll find a way to put it in there, trust me. You know, there's, there's uh, I really never try to kill anybody's dream. You know, that's what they want to do. They work hard to it. I be, uh, uh, I on be that. working, Spike. I'm I be what? working. Do you what? see, I'm right here. This work. I'm working. Come on, we're trying to take it back to the essence. The essence is, <laughs> the essence is, the essence is, is making a sacrifice so you can learn your craft. Yeah, I made a lot of sacrifices. You gotta, like, drive Uber or something. You gotta. That's that's what you want to do. You just right. don't walk in off the street and say, "Put me in the movie." It don't work like All that. Right. Don't put me in the movie. Put me in the web series. The, I'm put me in the Netflix series. series. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you got a problem with the movie, but we could do the Netflix it's series. It's still acting though. It's okay. a craft. I'm in a movie. I'm in a real movie. What's the name of the movie? It's called After Hours. Me and Mac Wilds. It's fire. But what did you do to prepare to be in that film? Um, he, well, number one, he told me he had written a part for me. So I was like, oh, thanks. And then he, <laughs> and then he told me. What and he it, said, <laughs> I wrote a part for you and just play yourself, right? <laughs> right, and I did my best not to play myself. Uh -huh. You see what I did there? Right, Spike, I Pleasure. appreciate you. Thank you, man. Black Klansman in theaters. August 10th. I got the walk, too. I got the Denzel walk, too. Like, you know what? Real smooth. k is a terrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> tonight is one of the most influential artists of the SoundCloud era and, and frankly, one of the biggest voices of young artists in music today. Give it up for Smoke Perk! Yeah. Hey, get it! Smoke <laughs> Perk! You know what's going on. Um, thank you, man. First guest of the second season. Thank you for doing the show, bro. Thank you guys for having me, for real, for real. No, I'm, I'm excited, man. I've, uh, I've watched your come up and I feel like over the last year or so, maybe six months, a lot of the noise that was out there about you was about controversy, about like J. Cole and things of that nature. But yeah. for me, I, when, I, when you dig into the music, what I hear is like a real music head who cares about making music. Yeah, no, I care. I care about the quality of my music. I care about the sound. I took, I, so I, I took a long time to drop my first project, Dead Star, which is like mostly rap and like pop. And I'm about to drop Dead Star too, which is probably gonna be almost, it's gonna be even crazier because uh, on the first one, I, I was just like trying out new sounds and I'm basically doing um, the same thing for the next one. So another thing that I said is different is the drugs, right? Honestly, I don't even be off the drugs like that, like anymore, but yeah, but. <laughs> what, <laughs> you guys don't believe? Yeah, why I, why I do that? Why well, yeah, hold, yeah, why are you doing my guy like that? <laughs> well, hold on, I thought you, you said I think that you were done with Zan, you were leaving Zan in 2017. Yeah, yeah, that's. And that's, that's, that's true? Yeah, yeah. You sticking to that? I'm, I'm sticking to that. I smoke weed, 
you know, I sip lean sometimes. I used to sip lean like every single day. I probably sip lean like every single day of like 2017. And where are you at with it now? How much? Like, I'll probably, when I come across it, maybe like, you know, I'll sip a cup or, you know, like. How much were you? But I definitely smoke weed. Like, well, that's always been there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I can't do is get judgy about rappers smoking weed, all right? My name is Smoke Perfect. I mean, your name is Smoke Perfect. Yeah, yeah, you have exactly. a brand to uphold. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm actually going to change it to just Perp soon. Really? I, yeah. Like, now, I want to drop the smoke out my name. I don't did know. you make a conscious decision? Because you often refer to yourself as Lil Perp. Were there too many Lils where you're like, I'm just not going Lil Perp? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because people just called me Smoke Perp or Lil Perp, but there was too many Lils, so I kind of just want to be Perp. Like, at a point, I'm just going to be Perp. I fuck with that. Yeah. Um, were, were you affected? I know you went on tour with Lil Peep. Um, in my opinion, Peep might have been one of the greatest lost talents that we've seen in, in music. Yeah. Were you affected from a drug standpoint by his passing? I was affected. Like, honestly, that's what made me stop, like, doing drugs like that. Honestly. It was kind of like a wake-up call for me. But that was also, like, my friend. Like, I went on my first tour with him. The Fredo thing too, like you know what I'm saying, like Fredo Santana. Yeah, I like, R.I.P. Fredo. And that's that's the reason why like I slowed down on the lean, cause I was I was drinking a lot of lean, like you know what I'm saying. I was drinking a lot of lean every single day. Like, it's not good. It's not. Lean is bad on so many levels. Yeah. Um, I, I hate to bring up something morose again, but this is what's real life is and what happened. You know, maybe the biggest, as big a name as there is in Florida is XXX. Um, how were you affected by his murder? Man, I was, that shit still got me fucked up. It's crazy because it was like literally me, Pump, X, and Ski, like us four, like we all came up together, like, you know, at the same time. And it was always like, it was always kind of like X was the one like guiding us, like knowing like like what to do, where to go, like all that, you know what I'm saying? So, and it's crazy because like, I don't know, it's just crazy. This is crazy. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still like in disbelief. Like you know, what I'm saying, like I still can't believe it happened. Do you? I felt a little weird when I was looking at your um, album covers, and I saw that you had like the coffin laying in the coffin cover. Yeah, star one. And it made me feel a little. I get a little nervous about like. I'm not gonna lie. Look, I'm not gonna lie. Shooting that cover took like four hours because I did not want to get in the coffin. That uh, <laughs> I did not want to get in that shit. That shit was scary. But but it was really just like it was really just me like. It was uh, me remaking like a, a G.G. Allen. A, it was like a G.G. Allen cover. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's you don't you're not like you don't have a death fascination or. No, nah, hell no. I ain't trying to die. I'm scared to die, nigga. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, OK, the whole cold thing. Was that just trolling? It felt like just trolling. It was it was just trolling. That's when I wasn't rapping as much. And there were people were just like, fuck that lyrical shit. And then it just turned into fuck J. Cole. And it was just like, I don't know. It was just all over the comments. Feel me, and then. But you don't actually feel like fuck J Cole. <laughs> no, 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 no. J Cole's cool. We cool. I love hearing that. All right. Well, listen. When you have an incredible voice of music and a guy who respects the beats and the rhymes, we got to do digging into the crates with Smoke Perk. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull out a record, and you tell me what significance, if any, the record has to you. All right? Okay. Uh, let's start here. <laughs> Okay, so this is Blink-182. This is, this is a fire because I'm actually working on an EP with Travis Barker right now. Whoa! So, like, so yeah. I think we're, we're actually, I think we're going to drop it under one name, like a band, too. Really? Yeah. Oh, so this is like you guys are actually doing a collaborative... Yeah, like we're dropping it under one name. Like, like Run the Jewels. Like, like a band. Like, y'all heard it here first, straight up, like nobody else. Like, wow, oh, that's yeah. fire. So what, did, what, what made you, like, a fan of Blink-182 and Travis's work? Um, like when I went into middle school and I started skating and stuff, I kind of got into like Blink-182, Disturbed, and like, you know, I got, that's when I started getting into more rock, like Nirvana and like stuff like that. Um, and, and Travis is so ill because he's such an amazing drummer and such a hip hop head too. Yeah. Oh, any idea of what the name of the group together would be? I don't know, but what album is it? You know, you know what album is a cool name? Dogs Eating Dogs? That shit sounds so hard. <laughs> like he needs to come up with some shit like that. Like, okay, dope. Like the name of all the right, band. shout out to my man Travis Barker for sure. Um, all right, I'm gonna pull out another one. You tell me what you think. How about this little album right Yo, here. Oh, wow. you hear New York react when you pull out that. Look, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all something right here. 50 Cent is the motherfucking GOAT. I had every single album from like 
from Get Rich or Die Trying to like The Massacre to like Beg for Mercy, the G Unit albums. Like I had all that shit. You feel me? I had every album that came out. Did you ever do G Unit footwear or G Unit apparel? Bro, I had, I had, I had the fucking shoes. I had the fucking video game. All that shit. Like, what I was, was it about Fifty that you love so much? I don't know. It's it just. I'm from Florida, so like it was like I was always hearing like different music. I was always hearing more house and shit like growing up, like on the radio and shit. So when I would go home and like watch like BT or some shit, he would come on and he came with like that like aggression and just like that style, like you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know. I just, have you ever have you ever met him? Nah, I wish, bro. But I, I literally had every album, every G Unit album, bro. I was like in school in school screaming free AO and shit like <laughs> and I was like now I was like in fifth grade like sixth grade like <laughs> as you should all right one more album to show Lobo tell me how you feel about Lil Yachty I fuck with Lil Yachty that's the homie I think he's honestly as like as a rapper I feel like he's really he's kind of underrated I feel like he has bars and he could rap and he could kind of flow smoothly on whatever you throw at him type, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, I'm a, I think he's underrated musically generally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's also just the best person. He only eats pizza like me. I only eat pizza and shit. So. <laughs> Please don't tell me that you have the little Yachty diet. I, bro, I, I eat pizza and chicken tenders, bro. And do you drink any water at least? Of course I drink water. Okay. Of course. That's that was the main goal with Yachty, just and getting a lot him. of tea. Okay, water and tea? A lot of water. Yo, if we could tea. get the lean completely gone and all water and tea. Yo, I don't drink business. lean like that. I don't want nobody watching this to think I drink lean like that. I do not drink lean like that. Like, hey, listen, I'm gonna tell you right now. First of all, I'm thankful for you coming through to, to bless episode one. Thank and you. And number two, I, I, I appreciate what you're doing, man. I think you're a real dope voice in music. Um, and I think the music's frankly fire. Like there's, for anyone out there who sits around listening to Tribe Called Quest and Wu-Tang Clan and hasn't sat and peeped what these kids in Florida are doing, I really fuck with it. Thank you for doing the show, bro. Appreciate it. Smoke Burt, ladies and gentlemen. Let's also give it up for Mouse Jones, Spike Lee, Cypher Sounds, Amanda Seals. And now, to end the show, let's hand it off to my guy, A-Rab Music. <laughs> Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. Open Light is always open on Complex's YouTube channel, and so are all these amazing shows. Check them out.